Hey everyone, you're watching a physio named Jonah. That's this guy. Well, today we're talking about the different types of muscle contraction that are out there and the exercises that target them. There are lots of different ways that we differentiate exercises from one another and the type of muscle contraction that's primarily being used is one of them. This video is releasing on May 11th, 2020, which is in fact my 25th birthday. Before you ask, yes, I am beyond excited to be spending my 25th birthday talking about the three different types of muscle contractions that our bodies rely upon because I am a massive dork and I clearly haven't got the hang of parties yet. In today's video, we're going to break down what those types of muscle contraction are, when our body uses them, and finally go over why physios and rehab professionals target different kinds in our treatment. Got it? Good. Let's get started. Your body, yes, yours, is set up as a series of movable parts. That's your bones and joints. For the most part, this movement is driven by your muscles. Now, our muscles can accomplish different tasks depending on what's required of them. These tasks can be broken up into three different sections, which are concentric contractions, isometric contractions, as well as eccentric contractions. So, if you follow along with the videos over here, I'm going to be demonstrating those different types of muscle contraction using my biceps muscle. The first type, concentric contraction, is where the muscle activates and shortens. This usually makes the joint bend towards the muscle that's being activated. The second type of contraction is isometric contraction. In this type, the muscle activates but doesn't shorten or lengthen. It stays the same length. This often prevents a joint from moving or helps it to resist a force. The third type we'll talk about today is eccentric contraction. In eccentric contraction, the muscle activates but allows itself to lengthen. This allows the joint to bend away from that muscle in a controlled fashion. In all of these types of contractions we're talking about, the muscle is active or using energy. I'll spare you the explanation of cross bridges and what's happening at muscular level for today, but if this is something that you're interested in learning more about, let me know in the comment section below and I can absolutely tackle this in a future video. This dork would love to provide that video. Throughout one day in your life, you will at some point use all three of these types of muscle contraction, undoubtedly. If you don't believe me, let's take a really simple example like taking a sip from a cup of coffee because I love coffee. When I'm holding the mug still, my bicep is performing an isometric contraction. It's preventing the mug from falling back down to the table and fighting the force of gravity, but it's not shortening or lengthening. When I bring the mug up for a sip of that delicious caffeinated nectar, the biceps muscle is performing a concentric contraction. This means that the muscle group is activating, causing it to shorten, which makes the elbow bend and brings the mug up to my mouth. Now for the final part, and this is an important one because despite all appearances, I'm not trying to shotgun this coffee, I need to get the mug back out of my face. As I move the mug back down, my biceps are performing an eccentric contraction, which controls the straightening or extension of my elbow. The muscle is activated even though it's stretching out or lengthening. When the mug is back to its original position, the biceps resume the regularly scheduled isometric contraction until another concentric contraction rebrings that beautiful lifeblood up to my mouth, and so the cycle continues. In the final phase, or the eccentric contraction phase, it can be confusing and people may think that it's more of your tricep performing the motion. This is absolutely true as your tricep is active and drives your elbow extension. However, what I want to highlight today is that if you didn't have your biceps performing the eccentric contraction they do as you bring the mug away from your mouth, the whole thing would look a whole lot more like... The key here is that using the bicep eccentrically to control the movement helps to slow the mug down. Using muscles eccentrically or controlled lengthening is a huge part of how our body controls movement. Here are some lightning round examples of things that you do every single day that require all of these types of muscle contraction. Playing fetch with the dog using muscles around your shoulder. Breathing using your diaphragm. Playing fetch with the dog using lots of muscles around your shoulder. Typing hate mail about your least favorite coworker Gerald using your forearm muscles. Plain fetch with the dog using every single muscle around your shoulder. Using the muscles of your legs to maintain an appropriate six foot social distance. Still plain fetch with the dog even after all the muscles in your shoulder have exhausted and how is this dog still going? He's only 20 pounds, this doesn't make any sense. 
In the rehab world, these different types of muscle contraction are important because they allow us to strengthen muscles specifically in a way that works best with our patient's needs. There are multiple different reasons as to why we would choose one type of muscle contraction versus another, but for today, let's go through one specific example for each type of muscle contraction and why we would use it. Following an injury to a joint, quite often one of the first types of muscle contraction that we use is isometric contraction. This is because it's a way of keeping the muscle active, but doesn't require any movement of the joint that may have just been injured. An example of this is glute squeezes early in the rehab process after a hip replacement. This exercise is pretty simple. Someone activates their glute muscles or muscles surrounding the hip while they're laying down. This is very easy to do after a hip replacement and doesn't require any movement of the hip, but we're able to use our glute muscles and activate them in a time when we aren't walking around or moving as much. Concentric focus exercises are used by healthcare professionals for a ton of reasons. They're widely prescribed because of their simplicity and often given when we're trying to isolate and strengthen one muscle. An example of a concentric focused exercise that isn't the bicep curl, because we've heard enough about the biceps for today, would be the calf raise. As I rise up onto my toes, lifting my heels off the ground, you can see the calf muscle shortening or bunching up. The goal of an exercise like this is to promote the strength of the calf muscle or make it better at performing this shortening action. This can help with activities like running or walking, which require that muscle to be shortened over and over again. Eccentric contractions are most well known for their role in tendon rehab. When treating a tendonitis or tendinosis, it's quite common that an eccentric heavy program will be used. Don't worry too much about the why of this for today, just know that quite often eccentric exercises make tendons happy. An easily visible example of an eccentric rehab exercise would be a hamstring slider. From a bridge position, you slowly move your feet away from you and use your hamstrings to control your body's descent back down to the ground. As this is happening, you can see how the hamstrings lengthen out. However, they're also the muscles that are active during this. They're active as they lengthen. This particular exercise could be used as a moderate to higher level eccentric strengthening exercise for a hamstring tendinopathy. Additionally, eccentric contractions play a huge role in return to sports rehab. As you recall from before, we talked about how eccentric contractions are really big in the control of movement against momentum and gravity. This means that if you're going to be doing high velocity movements and requiring a lot of force on your body, you need your muscles to be able to activate eccentrically well to control those movements. All in all, a complete rehab or exercise program should include a focus on all three types of muscle contraction. For rehab purposes, the stage of rehab or healing may dictate what type of muscle contraction is being more heavily focused on at any given point in time. So hopefully that helped to explain isometric, eccentric, and concentric contractions. As you can see, we use each of them every single day, and exercises can target each of them differently. If there's anything else you'd like a physio to explain about muscles, their contractions, or different movements, drop it in the comment section below, and I'd be happy to look at it as a future video. If you're new around here and enjoyed the video, consider subscribing to my channel. It helps other viewers find my videos and makes sure you won't miss anything upcoming. Other than that, everyone, move your body, have a laugh today, and I will see you at the next video. He could put that big account if you know what I'm saying. <laughs> you get that email I sent you. Some good content right there. You'll never see anything like that again. You know what I'm talking about? <laughs> anyway, did you see the boss man today walking in here? Man had overalls on. What do you think this is? <laughs>